So the plot behind us is corn on corn. We're gonna talk about the carbon penalty of that. The very first 60 feet that's right in front of you is just a comparison of up front nitrogen passes and likewise the way the rest of the field. So first you have eight rows of corn with zero nitrogen. We're gonna to touch on its uh, lack of vigor and character here in a minute. Next to that you have 16 rows of bandit, 80 units supplied, three inches from each side, three inches away on each side of the row. Banded intentionally next to where the row of corn is gonna be. If we're gonna to go to the effort of on-planter nitrogen, what's the payoff? Why do we wanna to have to worry about doing a good job placing seeds and worry about fertility at the same time? Well, because the day we run the planter is the day we know where those rows of corn are gonna be. Before, at, before that, we don't know. Next to that, we have 80 units broadcast. UAN, liquid applied over the top. So we have 80 units banded, 80 units broadcast. Moving down, we also have a real high rate treatment of, uh, of broadcast down at the far side of the farm. So the front 60 feet that you're looking at has just those treatments on it. So just 80 units total here. Behind it, we came in at V6 with Y drop on a side dress application and added another 120. So then the primary rest part of this farm has, has 200 units. And that's what you're gonna look at here. So this side by side is from that 200 unit part, but it compares banded nitrogen, which is closer to me, and it compares that to broadcast nitrogen, which is further away. You can see a foot and a half of height difference. You can see higher ear set, better color, less stress, and we have nitrogen deficiency symptoms making their way up much further in the plant on the broadcast side. Now why is that? Well, that's because of the way nitrogen moves. It has its own cycle. And this is the nitrogen cycle for what we need to know as farmers, the parts of the nitrogen cycle that affect our crops. So you have atmospheric nitrogen. That's what makes up 70% of the gas that we take in with each breath. But below the soil is what matters to us. We have organic nitrogen. That's what's stored in our organic matter. The higher the organic matter percentage, the more nitrogen we can store. Lower the same way, the less nitrogen we can store. It's also this. In this corn on corn strip, we can see we have leftover residue. This is organic material. There's nitrogen in there, but it's not available to the plant. It's not been broken down yet. The process of breaking down nitrogen that's stored in organic matter or in material is called mineralization. That's a word that we talk about a lot because there's a lot of things that we can do as farmers to affect that mineralization. This year, because of the way the weather has been, at least here in central Illinois, mineralization has been very difficult, almost non-existent from what we've seen it in past years. In a great year, mineralization can give us 60, 80, maybe even upwards of 100 units of free nitrogen. This year, that's not the case. This year, it's almost none. This process, mineralization and immobilization, is what we call the carbon penalty. That's why we're sitting in front of a corn on corn plot to talk about this. The increased amount of organic matter present from last year's corn crop has thrown off our carbon to nitrogen ratio and tied up a lot of the nitrate and kept it away from the crop that needs it growing behind us. The other thing that's important to understand about the nitrogen cycle is what the plant uptake comes from. It comes from two components, ammonium and nitrate. Ammonium, NH4, is positively charged. It's clung in our soil. It's the non-mobile form of nitrogen. It's held in the clay particles which are negatively charged. The opposites held together. Nitrate on the opposite hand is negatively charged, NO3 minus. It's mobile, that's why it's leachable. That's what we worry about getting into our drain water and our groundwater systems. The coincidental thing is because the corn plant takes nitrogen up with water, 75% of the nitrogen that it takes up comes from this form, comes from the most difficult form to manage. Only 25 or so percent comes from this ammonium form because it's immobile, the plant roots have to be in direct contact with the, that molecule to take it up. So most of the nitrogen that it takes up comes moved by water into the root system with a process called mass flow in the nitrate form. When we pull it off, only 55% of the nitrogen that that plant took up, we sell and goes to town on the truck. 
the other 45% is stay, stays in the residue and the cob. So that you're gonna hear a lot, especially when you get to the field demos this afternoon about what are you gonna do about this 45% of your dollar that's left in your plant residue on your acre after the combine goes through. Distilling that down and what it means to us as farmers is the uptake chart. The key highlights of this are, by the time corn gets to V6, we have the growth stage across the bottom and the total percent of uptake on the right. By the time corn gets to V6, it's only taken up 20 units of nitrogen total. So from the day you plant it until the day it gets to your waste pocket, you've only taken up about 20 pounds total. But right when you get to V6, look what happens to the curve. The nodal roots emerge, are emerged from the crown. They begin to feed and put on root hairs tightly close to the base of this plant. And that slope of that curve goes way up. And from V6 to tassel, it'll take up six to eight pounds a day if it can get it. So managing nitrogen is important here it's extremely important here, but by the time we get to V10, we're only 25% of the way home. And by the time the corn gets to tassel, we're maybe not even quite 50% of the way home. So even if you have high clearance equipment and a wide drop system, the last chance that you may be able to do anything about it with tassel, you still need to have 50% in your tank or more left if you don't want to run out by the end of the race. So that's a lot of the basis of what we talk about with nitrogen its cycle and how it moves. So we talked about this a little bit, the efficiency of banding it next to the row because nitrogen doesn't spread out like water in the bottom of a bathtub. It stays close. If you've ever, it moves down with water, but it stays close. And 95% of the root mass of a corn plant is in a seven inch diameter by seven inch tall column. Sure, there are those long feeder roots. We can see those in a soil pit at any point in time, but most of the feeding happens within a seven inch diameter at the base of that plant. Now let's move a little bit later season. We've got to the V6 stage. One of the other treatment trials that's out here in this farm compares a 100% broadcast program to split applied. So the corn plants on your left and on my right here both receive 200 units of total nitrogen. We have the same total fertilizer investment in both of these trials. The difference is What's closest to me here had those 200 pounds broadcast applied liquid UAN at planting, a one and done. You were in the middle of a busy planting season. This year was as hectic as I've ever remembered. You called your cooperative and you said 200 units, they spread her on. This is what we have. If we take a more thoughtful approach and follow the base plus method, we say, how about making that 80 units and moving that second 120 into the season? and not by late. That's what happened over here. We did 80 units broadcast over the top, not even using the power of banding efficiency. And then we came in at side dress with wide drop, with side dress, and we put on the second 120 units at V6. You can see, even though we're getting a little peaked in the sun, much darker plant color, taller height, higher ear set, kernel counts have been better. And overall, we have a lot more nitrogen in the plant and a lot left in the tank on the split applied for the same total investment. What, part of what made that so dramatic this year was the carbon penalty. We can see it really clearly in the corn on corn plot behind me. The tie up of nitrogen by residue and by the microbes that are trying to break that residue down was tremendous. Using 360 soil scan in my geography of Northern Illinois, I don't think we took a single soil scan reading over 10 parts per million. To give you some frame of reference, traditionally at 10 parts per million is about when we would justify adding additional nitrogen. And that's part of the story that the zero nitrogen corn tells. So we've grown little to no nitrogen corn for several years on this farm here at 360 Yield Center. And in the past three years, they've never yielded less than 200 bushels with zero applied fertilizer. This is a high organic matter farm and it's well drained. This year, that corn may barely, if not at all, put an ear on. That's where I'm speaking to the carbon penalty and the story of mineralization, it was non-existent. In a great year, this 3.8% 3 3 organic matter soil can supply upwards of 100 units of nitrogen. In the last three growing seasons, 16, 17, and 18, it did, and it was wonderful. And we grew 200 plus bushel corn with zero applied nitrogen. This year is, is exactly the opposite. We have corn that will basically almost not put an ear on 
due to lack of nitrogen. And if we hadn't had this rain, we may have killed it due to lack of nitrogen. So the loss of mineralization meant we had to take steps, use the tools that we have, and make sure that this crop turned out well for us, even, in this, even due to the fact that Mother Nature did us no favors, as she does in, in, in better years. So moving forward, we're going to shift our focus to a little bit later in the season and a little bit different carbon penalty situation. So we're going to stand up and go right to the 10 over your right shoulder, and we're going to look at the corn on soybean plot. We've been talking a lot about those first stages of that corn plant. And David used this chart. I've got a, a duplicate of that chart as well to say the, the use of nitrogen throughout that cycle, life cycle of that plant. I'm just pointing out here, as Dave said, in that you know, waist to shoulder high stage, we've still used very little of our overall nitrogen budget. Remember, we all have a nitrogen budget financially that we're going to put towards it, but the soil is also going to provide some to us in certain years, and we want to know what we can take advantage of. But as we're going to talk about as we go through this, is if we put it all out there up front, we lay our, all our cards out there, we have no chance to make any kind of adjustments along the way and still keep our financials in, in order. So our focus here, even though we're in front of the corn on soybean standpoint, is what do we do in that mid and late season to kind of continue to feed that plant? For reference, so that you understand what, what's behind us, what's in front of you and behind me. See the plants with kind of the blue ribbons on? There's 24 rows that this is a, a, a base rate of 80 units of N using 360 Bandit. Within that plot, we're also going to do some evaluations of Y drop, follow, following with Y drop on kind of an early season standpoint. And also within that plot, we're going to use a, a second pass of Y drop. And we'll talk a bit about that. Next to it, more in the orange uh, colored ribbons, is a strip of 24 rows, some subsets within it, but it's a broadcast pre plant. A low rate, 80 units again, broadcast. Uh, UAN application, both at the same same time frame in terms of when we were planting. And then the next set of 24 rows, which you can see with the red ribbons, as you're out today, if you're walking through here, you can certainly uh, kind of dive in there and take a closer look at things. But we have a full rate, 200 pounds, 200 units of nitrogen applied broadcast up front. And that's all that that particular strip is going to see throughout its growing season contrasted to these that are gonna get a side dress application at a later point. So 80 units up front in two strips, 200 units up front with that third strip of 24 rows. So to continue our evaluation, as you go past that, you start to see some pink ribbons and then green. It gets a little harder to see them from here. But what we're looking at are side dress tools. We've got 24 rows of a top dress urea. 24 rows of a coulter style, a lot of a very, very common practice in terms of side dressing. And then we've got 24 rows of Y drop in a side dress format to be able to make comparisons on that more early season application. Now, we're talking about 360 Bandit in a number of places, number of conversations. So a common question that comes to, 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 to mind for you and should and does to us as well, how much in can we put through that bandit or should we be putting through that bandit and getting the benefit out of it? So at that stage, there's a strip out there where we are evaluating a low, a middle, and a higher rate of nitrogen applied through bandit. So stay tuned to see what kind of results we see with that and add in addition to what we've seen in prior years where we banded nitrogen uh, with that planter. Let's focus first on, we put our base rate out here and we're going to now come back in and do a side dress application. And one of those tools we said was a top dress urea uh, application. So you see the custom applicator going through the field here with a spinner, 60 foot pattern. We're putting out uh, uh, urea specific. So you've got the pellets spread. Bear in mind that we're at the mercy of the conditions. And the day that this was applied was a standard day. It was a maybe a 12 to 15, 16 mile an hour wind out of the west. This applicator 
made this pass in conjunction with making other, you know, doing applications to other fields. It was no different. It wasn't special. It wasn't because the wind was high. It wasn't because the wind was low. It was in the pattern of what he was doing in terms of uh, his flow through from uh, customer to customer. In that 60 foot pass, we would see though with that wind, the movement of some of those pellets over into the next strip. Now in a trial like this, where it's not urea next to it, it was visible. We could tell that this was happening in the process and we could also then kind of gauge to what was gonna happen down the road here. When we apply a top dress urea format, we know that some of those pellets are not gonna land on the ground. Some are gonna land inside of the whirl of this corn plant. And we can see on some of these lower leaves where pellets of, of urea landed and damaged that leaf before it, it came out of the whirl. So when it came out, we were starting to see burning on the, on the edges of the leaves. We know that we've had some impact on that plant's ability to take up moisture, to develop its root system, to take up nutrients. We know at certain stages here too, Dave talked about, we're determining kernels around and we're term determining kernels long. We've got a stress at a point in time that we don't necessarily need it to be there. So you can see where those pellets have landed inside of that whirl and, and caused some damage on some of those lower leaves, those early leaves. So from a standpoint of that, so let's look at what if instead of doing an application with a top dress urea, what if that application were done with say the coulter bar? And we see a coulter bar going through the field here, standard type of a scenario. We're in 30 inch rows in this particular evaluation. So if we're gonna hit it down the middle, in theory, we're 15 inches away from that plant all the way through the field. And I think one thing that really jumps out at us is that those young plants that were our applications taking place there, maybe that V6 range, we can see where we went with that coulter but you'll notice, and had we been here, say, yesterday looking at this, it really jumps out at you that that coulter slit has now opened up and we see more of a crack, a defined crack following that coulter than we do out in the other parts of the field. We see more of a scattering of the cracks uh, where uh, we, we did not go through with the coulter. About five weeks, I think Dave, you said was, uh, we went in this particular plot without uh, any amount of moisture. So about July 3rd, 4th, kind of in that time frame was the, the most prominent rain uh, until last night. So if we consider the tools so far, we've looked at top dress urea, we've looked at culture bar. Let's now evaluate Y drop on that toolbar. And the difference, the reason that we're doing this is to be able to drag that hose along the base of that plant and position our nutrient, our mobile nutrient of nitrogen or possibly nitrogen sulfur, you know, maybe a 10% uh, mix with sulfur in there, to be able to allow that nutrient to be positioned where that stem water can now take it down into that root mass that Dave was, was talking uh, about in, in extent there. So, Top dress urea comparison to coulter comparison to a Y drop on a side dress, try side dress bar. On the left, you're looking at ears that we pulled in prior season where it was from a Y drop side dress. And on the right, you're looking at ears pulled from a, a coulter type of environment. In general, they don't look terribly different, but the reality of the matter was it's about five to six bushel advantage for Y drop over that coulter pass. And, and a lot of folks will tell us that, that that's not just us making that information up. That is consistent. So what is the difference there? We're making the pass about the same time. It's really about placement, putting that nutrient where it can be taken up by the plant rather than positioning it 15 inches away from the plant where roots then, as Dave said, have to come into contact with it or water has to flow to it. And that doesn't always happen to be the case. Now, to understand this even further, you've heard Greg talk about this before. I, I bet somewhere along the way you've seen this as well, but let's, let's use it to have some understanding of this. Is how do we know 
that the plant has nitrogen in it. Well, we've utilized a marker system. We're basically positioning nitrogen with a marker and we're able to tell the uptake in those plants, whether or not we're getting it in the ear or it's staying in the plant or it's staying in the soil. And our evaluations have shown us, working with the University of Illinois, that with Y-Drop, we're seeing a good 25% increase in the uptake of nitrogen into the plant and into the, particularly into the ear and the benefit that it can bring. Iowa Soybean Association works with cooperators as well. A number of their locations have, have seen a lot of the same kind of results. Y-Drop in the yellow bar is indicating that we've seen better results with it versus UAN through a culture or top dress urea as well, about 10 bushel advantage in this case that they were seeing, or excuse me, about an eight and a half bushel advantage over Coulter, about a 25 bushel advantage over uh, a top dress urea kind of a setting. What happens if we hit a year like 2012, the dry years? Can we still get the benefit out of it? Ken Ferry worked with uh, Y drop side dress compared to Coulter in a dry season where it turned out that after application, they went 40 or 41 straight days without moisture. And yet in his evaluation in this situation, they saw a 10 bushel advantage. Again, Y drop placement versus Coulter placement. In, a, in an environment, you hear a lot of us talk about the once and done, you hear us talk about base plus program. So in our once and done kind of scenario, I'm gonna give you an example here and say, what if we put out 275 units of N total? That's what we apply. At 50 cents a unit, that's gonna be about $137 investment. We're exposed, full, full exposure at that point in time. Let's contrast that to a base plus approach. We're showing in both of our trials here, 80 units up front, we now at our 50 cent rate have about a $40 exposure of our nitrogen. Time is on our side though. We get to look and see what is that plant telling us? What is the soil indicating to us? What are our soil scan readings coming back at? We may follow that with a side dress early, put 60 more units of N out there. So we've got an additional 30 units of exposure. We're now at $70, about half of what we had if we just went straight up front. The crop tells us in a year like this, we still don't have enough out there. We may be able to follow it again with a later application of 60 units, put another $30 out there. We're still at a $100 investment versus $137 investment. In some years, we may apply, apply enough in to get to this level. In other years, we may apply less than this because the crop and the conditions suggest to us that we don't really need it. Again, all this is about our base plus program. There are tools available to you today that allow you to take back control of what you're doing in your nitrogen plan. And our objective is that you find a way to get more from your nitrogen dollar.